Team Aware, though. We haven't talked about Team Aware. Obviously, finished the season red hot in Liga for Lille last year. Now, two seasons ago, they won the title. Last season, they were, I don't know, 31 points off the top or something mm -hmm. <laughs> crazy. I mean, they were way behind the winners, PSG. They really struggled and finished middle of the table. But Tim Weah finished very, very strong. He had three goals and an assist in his last, I think, five or six games. So I want to see how he does against Auxerre. That's on BN Sports on Sunday, 9 a.m. Eastern. So Tim Weah is one that we need to keep an eye on. I uh, got Busio and Tanner Tessman playing for Venezia in the Coppa Italia versus Ascoli. That's on at 1145 a.m. Eastern on Sunday. And then Daryl DK, he's our only Monday U.S. men's national team representative. He's taking uh, taking on Watford with West Brom. That game will be on at 3 p.m. Eastern on ESPN Plus on Monday. So some big, big games here. A anybody else kind of stand out here from on, on the, I'd say the fringes, but any of these other players that we haven't discussed yet? I'm just waiting for... Uh... The lineups to get confirmed for for today's. Uh, I want yeah, just see if Chris know, Richards just, starts. Tell me if Chris Richards. Just refresh. Uh, yeah, refresh. Just, just we're gonna keep running this show for another uh, at least fourteen minutes to make sure that we can get that uh, that that update in. But no, um, when I'm thinking about this weekend, uh, a lot of MLS guys I think are are are, are really important. It's just a kickoff to the season in in. Europe will give us some indicators, right? You've now gone through an entire preseason when we talked about Ricardo Pepe, um, talking about Joe Scali, talking about Gio Reyna uh, from the Bundesliga standpoint. Um, Timo Weah, though, is one that I think is a great uh, talking point because of the fact that he is going to have to increase his output in terms of goals and assists if he wants to be a starting winger for a club the size of, uh, uh, of um, Lille. In, in France. Now, they're not a massive club, but they've had an incredible run over the last few years, kind of yeah. phasing, phasing or fading out, lost their coach after winning the championship, and then sort of last year, settling into more what I think is a more re realistic role after, after being in the Champions League. But what, what, I, what I think it's really important is that we've got guys like Brendan Aronson to Timo Weah. Brendan Aronson can get away with a lot more because of the intangibles of his game, right? Again, the pressing, the balls won in high positions that lead to goals, you know, initiating attacks, uh, certain things like that that you can measure uh, if you're a coach internally. But for Timo Weah, he's such an out-and-out -out winger that there's got to be a final product. Now, I could put it on the goal line for you, Jimmy, and you don't finish it. That's not my fault, and you're going to be able to see <laughs> that. Um, I mean, I know if I put it on your head, you got a chance, but on your foot, maybe not, Jimmy, you know? Um, that's, fair. that's fair, but, but I've missed, uh, I've missed a few sitters in my career. I'm not going to lie. Uh, I mean, everybody has. And so it's not always black and white, but I do want to see an increased product just in measurable stats from him this year. Right. I think it, he was red hot at the end of the year, but he scored his first goal of the season. Um, yes. I don't it know. Like him, it took him like four nine weeks. Months. Yeah. Four <laughs> weeks months left in the season. season. <laughs> um, and to be able to see that come together and, and something more of a complete package for a striker that has so much potential to him that we've seen in the national team whether that's the ball to Christian Pulisic for a goal, the goal that he scored against Jamaica. Mm -hmm, We've mm -hmm. seen that he has the ability to have that final product at an, a very world-class or world-class adjacent or potential level. I want to see that come through over a season where maybe you're getting him in the five to 10 goals, five to 10 assists uh, world. If you can have, you know, 10 to 15 goal assists co combined, I think it's a really, really great stepping stone for him. And one that we can kind of look at him as a as a much more measurable uh, winger in terms of the quality of play of the league and and his ability to kind of what's the upside that he has in the future. So he's one that I I want to have a good first week, but also establish himself as a starter for the whole season. Yeah, and yeah. then prove that through through things that aren't just you know um, being being a, a dangerous attacker on the field that creates space for other players. What more can we get out of him? I mean, what what. Because he's not coming on our podcast. He said that online. He's not doing any more podcasts. So well, well, what's what's of interest to me with regard to, to Timo Weah and Lille is where he starts because he scored his first goal when he was in the nine spot. And mm -hmm. he had his best goal slash assist contributions playing higher up the field. And very similar to now Edin Tursich, the manager of Borussia Dortmund, saying that publicly that Gio Reyna is going to probably play more centrally. Are we going to see something similar with Team Away where he starts to get away from being an out-and-out -out winger, which is where I think we have him slotted to start at this particular moment, and maybe moving into a nine spot, or maybe they play two up top, as they have done before with Barack Yilmaz as his strike partner. So lots to to look after. I mean, that's why this first weekend is super exciting. I hope that everybody listening and watching makes some time, and maybe you can be our correspondent and report back to us on Monday's podcast for In Soccer We Trust. Mm -hmm. We'll go live at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. 
to get everybody's thoughts on how everybody did. A little good weekend, bad weekend for uh for Good weekend. Trust. Yeah, that's our <laughs> TV shout out for everybody. Uh, there is one more game happening with an American we haven't talked about yet, and that's happening today. Eintracht Frankfurt, who are the reigning Europa League winners, so they finished 11th in Bundesliga last season, taking on Bayern Munich today. Now, from a Canadian perspective, good to see Alfonso Davies getting the start. So it'll be very interesting to see how he plays, especially because Sadio Mane is also starting up top and how they're going to look to combine and where Alfonso Davies is going to set up. Is he going to be a wing back or, or what that looks like? But Timothy Chandler, a former U.S. international who I have that, that card as well. Yeah. We're going to get into our cards and our final thoughts okay. here. But Timmy Chandler, though older, has a lot of experience. And he plays for Eintracht not starting today, but did sign a, a contract extension that should keep him at the club until he retires. So congratulations to him on that. Obviously, he's had a very, very solid career. And we probably don't talk about him enough. Now, I feel like he falls in the Tim Ream camp. We haven't seen him in a long time. I don't think he's going to get into the player pool unless he blows up and him not starting today doesn't help that. But I just wanted to give him a shout out because he uh, has definitely has some caps for us and and uh, played a big role for us in, in certain games. So I just yeah, wanted to. to and he, a- he's only 32. So technically, he could still be in the national team. He could. 29, 29 caps, but just sort of hasn't been in the mix. Played a bit part role last year on the Europa League run of, of, of Frankfurt. I think 17 league matches. Yeah. Uh, for him, which 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 is good and 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 a squad player. And again, if if you had told me ten years ago we've got a guy playing seventeen matches uh, in a Bundesliga season, that's a national team player, right? Right, um, right, right. But but now I think you're able to look beyond that, knowing that you've got a potential of players. Not to say anybody should be written off, because if they have the form and the quality, you know, it's funny, Jimmy, because I I actually want to get into this uh, soon. Of all of the dual nationals that we lost to Mexico. Who could be the biggest help or support or somebody that we could use uh, in our national team now in terms of some of our uh, some of our issues of 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 I guess Funes Mori could have played for the U.S. Um, Are you saying all time? Are you saying currently? Just like currently playing now that could be in support of our national team. You got Jonathan uh, Gonzalez, who's 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 a center back. I you mean, know, we're looking at Julian like- Araujo could be depth on a right back position when we we're talking about Sergio Des because we don't currently have de- yeah we have. DeAndre Yedlin, but you know, a younger Cannon. player in Araujo. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah, Cannon. Um, but like again, um is I there think, is there an argument there? I mean, Raul um, Jimenez would be I, I would love to see Raul Jimenez as our number nine, just to see how much he would enjoy it. You know, I think that he looks a little Raul Jimenez is a Raul Jimenez? The number nine for but, Mexico. But he's a dual national? Oh, he's not, but I'm just saying. Oh, I thought you meant you're Mexican just making up a dream, dream scenarios here. <laughs> I'm talking. I'm like, trying to do that the whole show, man. Like all this speculation. I'm talking about oh, our national. current national team, dual nationals uh, that have, that chose to play for Mexico, um, and and uh, you know, and um, knowing that we've got some situations in our national team where we don't have as much depth. Is there any players that you're like, yeah, that would, would have been nice at the moment. I'm not no. really seeing tons. No, I'm not, I'm not either. Not like I, an instant shoe in like pool players. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, but, yeah, sure. That would provide depth and, and would challenge for spots, but nobody that would out and out be like, Oh my God, that was such a big loss for us. You know, that's, that's in any way, in, in many ways, I feel like we've done the opposite. I mean, getting desks, Eunice Musa, you know, that's, those are huge giant W's. And I think that's also helped us, Efra Alvarez? Efra Alvarez? I, mean, I, I like Alvarez. I do. I like his game a lot. And I wonder how he and where he would slot into our system where we could get the most out of him. I think yeah. sometimes the Galaxy is probably looking to do that uh, as well. But-